and to lead worship this morning. God calls the strong and the weak, the rich and the poor, the grateful and the grumblers. He calls us to be members of his kingdom. Come and let us worship our God, whose grace and generosity is beyond all understanding, whose love is for all and binds us all together. Now let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Happy are those who have the God of Israel as their helper. He is the one who keeps every promise forever, who gives justice to the oppressed. Let us pray. Faithful God, you draw near to us in our joy and in our grief, in our hope and in our despair. When we are bowed down, you raise us anew. We turn to you now in search of your healing touch. God of compassion and love, move among us this hour. Open our eyes, dispel our fears, and show the real life that you have to offer. We pray this in the name of the risen one, Jesus the Christ. Creator God, we gather this day to worship you and offer you our praise as we begin to see signs of the seasons changing. Through the warmth of the days, may we be reminded of your love for each one of us, your children. In the changing colours of the seasons, may we be reminded of the diversity of your world. As crops ripen and prepare for harvest, may we be reminded of your provision for us day by day. Open our hearts and still our minds to receive your word to us. Stir our imaginations and move us to action as we pledge to pass on the gift of hope for the world through our daily living and in the legacy we leave for future generations. Merciful God, we acknowledge that there are times when we have fallen short of how we would wish to live. We have failed to live as the people you would have us be. For the times we have forgotten that this world is yours and that we have used it without proper regard for our sisters and brothers and the earth itself forgive us. For the times we have taken our family and friends for granted, when we have put ourselves first and disregarded their needs, forgive us. For the times when we fail to recognise the gifts of faith, hope and love and have been too weak and fearful in our discipleship, forgive us. God, whose mercy knows no limits and whose love extends beyond space and time, forgive us our feelings and draw us back to you once again. We pray today in the name of our living Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own. Oh, 
Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that you always listen even when our voices are less than joyful. We thank you that you still wait for us even when we dawdle or drag our feet. We thank you that your generosity always overflows even when we are grudging of its bounty to others. God, we thank you that you are always and completely yourself and that your love is there for never limited by our smallness. Father of all humanity, before the world began, you so loved us. Before you had created us, you were faithful to us, and we, as your people, are thankful for your great and abiding love, shown again and again down the ages. You have never abandoned us, even when we have abandoned you. You have never forgotten us, even when we have strayed from the path. We praise you, faithful God, for the steadfast love which has always guided us, for the promise which has never faltered, for the light which has lightened our way, for the story which has reminded us of those who came before us, for your steadfast love and mercies new with each morning. We join our voices as one to give you praise and thanks. God who makes us with the earth, God who gives us to the world, God with us in our struggles. Hear our fears and needs, hold our hand as you walk beside us and advise, encourage and guide us. God of love, how wonderful it is for us all to know that you love us, no matter our background. Thank you that in the kingdom of God we find radical welcome and inclusion for all, even ourselves. We delight in our Father's love. In your kingdom there will be justice and peace, but we know that this is not the experience of everyone today. Bring your kingdom, Lord. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. God of justice, we pray for people who find themselves caught up in conflict, for those navigating difficult relationships and making hard decisions, for those who have experienced discrimination and unfairness, for those caught up in dangerous situations around the world. We pray for people who find themselves on the margins, for those who feel they don't quite fit in or are being left out. For those who don't want others to know they are struggling. For those who can't access the things we take for granted because of poverty or disability. Break down the barriers. Bring your kingdom, Lord. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. God of peace, we pray for your church, for your parish and the communities who gather here each week. For our brothers and sisters around the world, Strengthen and encourage us, Lord, as we settle into new rhythms of life. We remember those who have suffered and are struggling with the effects of the last few months. We pray for those who are trying to return to a new normality and for those who are caught between the two. Bring your kingdom, Lord. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. God who makes us with the air, God who gives us to the world, God with us in our struggles. Hear our fears and needs. Hold your hand as you walk beside us and advise, encourage and guide us in the high and holy name of Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we come to study your word. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A, a story is told about Florello Lagardia, who was mayor of New York City during the Depression. A man who was known and respected for his humanity. One bitterly cold day in January 1935, he turned up at a district court in one of the poorest areas of the city, dismissed the judge on duty and took over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him, charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She said she was very sorry, but explained that her daughter's husband had deserted her. Her daughter was sick and her two children were starving. But the shopkeeper, from whom the bread was stolen, refused to drop the charges. It's a real bad neighbourhood, your honour, the shopkeeper said, and she's got to be punished to teach others round here a lesson. The mayor sighed. Then he turned to the woman and said, the law makes no exceptions. Ten dollars a day or ten days in jail. But even as he pronounced sentence, the mayor was already reaching into his pocket. He extracted a $10 bill and said, here is payment for the $10 fine, which I now remit. And furthermore, I'm going to fine everyone in this courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread so that her grandchildren can eat. Mr. Bailiff, collect the fines and give them to the defendant. The following day, the newspapers reported that $47.50 was turned over to a bewildered old lady who had stolen a loaf of bread to feed her starving grandchildren. 50 cents of that amount being contributed by a red-faced grocery store owner. Did the old lady in the story get what she deserved? She had stolen a loaf of bread. She had a good reason for stealing the bread, but she still broke the law and had to be punished. What we see in this story is an example of grace. The mayor, rather than punishing the woman, paid the fine on her behalf. And that is what Jesus has done for us. We are all guilty of sin and deserve to be punished. But Jesus, by God's grace, paid our fines on a cross on Calvary. The parable of the workers in the vineyard is also about grace. Jesus told the parable to his disciples as they travelled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Recently in Galilee, they had met a rich man who had asked Jesus what he could do to inherit eternal life. And the disciples had said, who then can be saved? The parable captures the insecurity of life in Jesus' day, when many people hired themselves out as day labourers. If a day labourer was not hired on a particular day, he and his family were likely to go hungry 
as a day's wage left nothing to spare for another day. We can also see parallels with the low paid workers in our own society and the rise of the use of zero hours contracts which offer little security and with the insecurity of many people throughout the world who still struggle to earn a living wage. The parable tells us that the vineyard owner went to the market at 6 a.m. and hired a number of workers, agreeing to pay them a silver coin. He returned to the marketplace three more times that day and hired more labourers, promising to pay them a fair wage. Then just before 5 p.m., he went back to the marketplace and saw some men that no one had hired, and he also sent them to work in his vineyard. In Palestine, grapes ripened towards the end of September. When they were ripe, it was a real race against time to get them harvested before the rains came and the crops were ruined. At the end of the day, the workers were given their wages, starting with those who'd been hired first. Each worker received a silver coin, but those who had been hired first grumbled because they received the same amount as those who had worked for only one hour. In response to the complaint, the owner reminded them that they had been paid the wages that they had agreed to and asked, don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Does this parable make us feel uneasy? Does it offend our concept of fairness? William Barclay tells us that the parable of the workers in the vineyard is considered to be one of the greatest of all the parables because it contains a truth which goes to the very heart of the Christian faith. It demonstrates the true grace of God. What does this parable say about the economic systems in our world which leave some much wealthier than others. Have we got our values right? A top footballer in the Premier League can earn up to 100,000 a week, while a care worker in a nursing home, part of a team caring for 20 people, may struggle to earn a, a wage that she can survive, she or he can survive on. We can contrast this economic model with the model given to our old, us in our Old Testament reading, which tells us that those who gathered much did not have too much, and those who had little did not have too little. And in the parable, where everyone was paid the same because they were given what they needed, the parable is in one sense a warning to those first disciples who were in some ways like the labourers who had been hired at 6 a.m. They had been called by Jesus at the start of his ministry. They enjoyed the privilege of being first chosen, of spending time with Jesus and getting to know him as a friend as well as a teacher. But others would come, and in saying that those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last, Jesus was indicating that they must not claim special honour or a special place because they were the first. The Jews were God's chosen people, and in Jesus' time, they regarded themselves as special, and many looked down on Gentiles 
and this attitude threatened to be carried forward into the Christian church. But as Jesus showed and God confirmed to Peter, it did not matter whether a person was a Jew or a Gentile, all were welcome in God's kingdom. The parable reminds us of the compassion of God, portrayed as the vineyard owner. It shows us that no matter when a person becomes a Christian, whether in the first flush of youth, in middle age or late in life, they receive the same measure of love and grace from God. In the Church of Christ, seniority does not necessarily mean honour. Members old and new each have a contribution to make. We are all valued and God has work for each and every one of us to do. The vineyard owner was prepared to hire the men that no one else wanted. What mattered was not who they were or the length of time they worked, but their willingness to serve. The parable also reminds us of the generosity of God. The labourers all received the same pay because those who were hired at 5 p.m. needed the day's wage as much as those who began to work at 6 a.m. And they were willing to work for whatever the owner was prepared to pay. Every person has a right to work and to earn a living wage and all work and service willingly given is valued by God. A Christian works for the joy of serving God and his fellow man. We cannot earn what God gives us. We cannot deserve it. What God gives is given out of the generosity of his heart and it's not pay for work done but a gift of grace. Our reading today speaks about the contentment with what God provides. This is a frequent theme in scripture and a very important theme for living well and for creation. I wonder, did you watch the programme Extinction the Facts, narrated by David Attenborough last Sunday evening? He said, that the dominant model of economics, which exists, relies on endless growth and leads to addiction to having more. But it doesn't factor in the impacts of waste, of harm to species, injustice and exploitation. We can contrast this with the model of God's economics which we have read about this morning. Economics which are based on love, generosity and abundance. The parable of the labourers in the vineyard also gives us a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is like. A kingdom where all who serve have equal value. A kingdom which Jesus was prepared to suffer and die for a kingdom based on the grace of God. How can we as Christians live by the economics of God's kingdom? What action can we take to demonstrate our desire to seek justice and our care for all that God has created? Let us seek God's help and the guidance of his spirit to show us the way to further his kingdom here on earth, as it is in heaven. Amen.
And now let us go out into the world to love and serve the Lord our God and care for all that he has created. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and those we love, wherever they may be, now and always.